All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to talk about hyperbolic coordinates, which is an analog of polar coordinates, but that works very nicely for hyperbolas. So in particular, today let's calculate the double integral over some region of the function y dx dy, where d is the region in the first quadrant enclosed by the following two hyperbolas, x squared minus y squared equals to 1, and x squared minus y squared equals to 4, and the lines y equals to 0 and y equals to tanh2 of x. You'll see why we have this precisely. So, what I'm saying is you have to use hyperbolic coordinates because you have hyperbolas. So, remember when you use polar coordinates, it's very nice for circles and disks. Well, here hyperbolic coordinates are nice for hyperbolas. So, let me first draw a picture of what's going on. So what you're doing, you have this function y and you want to integrate it over the following region d. So this is x, y and it's in the first quadrant. So first you have the hyperbola x squared minus y squared equals to 1. So if you want y is square root of x squared minus 1, which looks something like that. On the other hand, you have x squared minus y squared equals to 4. And notice if y is 0, this gives you x is plus or minus 2. So it starts here. And lastly, two lines. We have the horizontal line y equals to 0. And then the line y equals to tanh2 of x, which might look something like that. Assume for now that it just intersects that line in one. Assume that, sorry, this line intersects the hyperbola in precisely one point each. You can do this with some algebra, but it's not why we're here today. And so what is the region? The region is between those two hyperbolas over this line, under this line. So it's this hyperbolic region. And the question is now, you know, what coordinates do we use? Hyperbolic coordinates, which are, what are they? It's exactly the same as polar coordinates, but with cinch and cosh. So hyperbolic coordinates. Namely, x equals to r cosh of theta, and y is r cinch of theta. And careful, uh, before theta is always between 0 and 2 pi, not here. Theta can be a thing between anything and anything. So that's one thing. And now let's express our curves in terms of r and theta. So x squared minus y squared equals to 1. That means r squared cosh squared theta minus r squared cinch of theta or sinh squared of theta equals to 1. So r, squ r, squared, no, r squared cosh squared theta minus sinh squared theta equals to 1. And here's the nice thing. For you know, cosine and sine, we have cosine squared plus sine squared equals to 1. Here we have cosh squared minus sinh squared equals to 1. So indeed, r squared equals to 1, and so assuming r is positive, r equals to 1. So here's the cool thing. Uh, this hyperbola that's very complicated just becomes r equals to 1. And it makes sense. For uh, polar coordinates, the circles are, you know, r equals to something. Here for hyperbolic coordinates, hyperbolas are curves of the form r equals to something. And similarly, if you do the same thing here, if you do x squared minus y squared equals to 4, that gives you r squared equals to 4, so r equals to 2. 
And so this becomes r equals to 2. And now let's see what happens to our lines. So well, let's see. Uh, y equals to 0. That gives you sinh of theta equals to 0. So sinh is e to the theta minus e to the minus theta over 2 equals to 0. And so e to the theta equals to e to the minus theta. And the only theta that makes this work is 0. So this becomes theta equals to 0. Last but not least, a y equals to tang of 2x. That gives you y over x equals to tang of 2. So r sinh of theta over r cosh of theta equals to tang of 2. Cancel this out, and you get tang of theta equals to tang of 2. And you can show that tang is 1 to 1. So in fact, this implies that theta equals to 2. So this weird line, y equals to tang 2 of x, because just becomes uh, theta equals to 2. So it's interesting. It's just like for polar coordinates, theta equals to something becomes a line. Same thing here. And in particular, what is d is just the region r between 1 and 2, and theta between 0 and 2. So now we don't need our picture anymore, but it's still very neat. D is so R between 1 and 2, and theta between 0 and 2. OK, so in particular, to calculate that integral, it becomes the following integral of d of y, dx dy, will become integral from 0 to 1 and 0 to 2. y is r sinh of theta, dr d theta. And lastly, we just need to figure out what the Jacobian is. So let's see. So now I guess a 4. Just dx dy becomes something dr d theta. What do you put? The Jacobian. So dx dy over dr d theta. And again, I don't like this partial notation, but I like this because you can just think of it as just canceling out dr and d theta. And then what is that? So dx dy over dr d theta. That's just a determinant of everything. dx dr, dx d theta, dy dr, dy d theta. It might look like a hopeless case, but it's not. Because remember, x is r cosh of theta, y is r sinh of theta. So dx dr is cosh of theta dx d theta is r sinh of theta. So careful. The derivative of cosh is sinh, not minus sinh. And then sinh of theta and then r cosh of theta. And then what you're left with is r cosh squared of theta minus r sinh squared of theta. So it's r cosh squared of theta minus sinh squared of theta. And that is just r. Because this equals to 1. And so in particular, we get absolute value of r dr d theta, which becomes r dr d theta. So how cool. Just like for polar coordinates, the Jacobian is r. And therefore, coming back to our original integral, 
that becomes y dx dy becomes r sinh theta r dr d theta and that becomes integral from 0 to 2 integral from 0 to 1 r squared sinh of theta dr d theta and now you can just separate them out So that becomes so integral from uh, one second. Oh, I think I, I mixed up something. So uh, no, R. Sorry, it's not from zero to one. It's from one to two. Because look, we have this thing. R is from one to two, and then theta is from zero to two, and we get that and that. And so now you can just separate it out. That's integral from one to two of r squared dr integral from 0 to 2 of sinh theta d theta and that becomes 1 third r cubed from 1 to 2 and then cosh of theta from 0 to 2 and that should become 1 third times 8 minus 1 so 7 thirds cosh of 2 minus cosh of 0, which is 1, and we get our end result, 7 thirds cosh of 2 minus 1. How neat is that? And um, what I wanted to say, of course, when do you use hyperbolic coordinates? Whenever you have some sort of a hyperbola, or even in three dimensions, hyperboloid of one sheet or two sheets, those are very easily expressed. And of course, you could have a analog of cylindrical coordinates, but for a hyperbolic coordinates. And those are also very nice. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this cute multivariable extravaganza. If, if you want to see more math and more calculus, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.